In this video, we will discuss films that were very, very cool at that time. This film tells the story of an immigrant who has big dreams to be successful and rich. But by becoming a big criminal. Let's start right away. Let's watch the life story of Tony Montana, known as Scarfacer together. In May 1980, a Cuban man named Tony Montana applied for asylum protection, in the city of Florida, United States. He hoped for the American dream to come true, having left Cuba by boat. When interrogated by three customs officers, they saw a tattoo on Tony's left hand in the form of a black heart, and identified him as a hitman. Then they decided to detain Tony while waiting for the government to evaluate his visa, then sent him to a shelter camp called Freedom Town which is located under a toll bridge, with other Cubans, including Tony's best friend, a former Cuban army soldier, named Manolo Riviera with the nickname Manny. While at the shelter, Manny accepts an offer from the Cuban mafia, which he presents to Tony. They got the task to kill Emilio Rebenga, a former aide to Fidel Castro who is now also being held in Freedom Town. Rebenga's murder was apparently requested by Frank Lopez a rich man from Miami who sells cars and trades cocaine. Because Rebenga had tortured Lopez's brother to death while still in Cuba a few years earlier. In exchange for killing Rebenga, Tony, Manny and their friends will get freedom and American citizenship passports. Then when there was a riot in Freedom Town, Tony and Manny went through the action. They killed Rebenga. After getting the passport, Tony Montana and Manny worked as dishwashers at a sandwich shop. Tony complains to Manny that he didn't come to America to do manual labor and stay poor. Tony enviously looked at the rich man who was entering the entertainment venue across the street. Then Lopez's right-hand man Omar Suarez, the man who contacted Manny for the job of killing Rebenga, offers Tony and Manny the low-stakes job of unloading marijuana from a ship from Mexico that will arrive in Miami for $500. Tony arrogantly protests Omar by refusing his job. Tony demands at least $1,000 for the job. After a heated argument, Omar assigns Tony to another job. It is a high-risk job to buy 2 kilograms of cocaine worth about $25,000 from a Colombian dealer. Tony and Manny will receive $5,000 for their work. Tony agreed and he immediately quit his job as a dishwasher. At the weekend, Tony, Manny and other friends they met in Freedom Town were Angel Fernandez and Cece. Depart to meet the Columbia City at the Hotel Kumu. Next to the highway at Miami Beach. Manny and Cece are in charge of watching from outside the hotel while Tony and Angel go up to the hotel room to meet with Hector. The meeting didn't go smoothly, Tony was annoyed, because Hector was being long-winded in his cocaine dealings. Suddenly, Tony and Angel are pointed at by a gun by Hector, it turns out that Hector has no intention of selling the cocaine he has to Tony. He just wanted to steal Tony's money. Hector threatens Tony to hand over the money. Hector slaughters Angel with a chainsaw. After the Angel died. Tony, who was about to be executed, was saved by Cece and Manny who arrived just in time to shoot dead Hector's accomplice. Manny suffered a minor gunshot wound to his shoulder when his machine gun jammed. An injured Hector manages to escape, but Tony catches up with him and shoots him dead in the middle of a busy highway. Tony and his friends then flee with cocaine and money before the police arrive. When Tony got a call from Omar. Tony tells Omar that he will give Frank the money and cocaine himself. Not through Omar. The following night, Tony and Manny finally meet up with Frank Lopez. At his house for the first time in. Where Tony legalizes Frank by not only succeeding in taking the cocaine, but also returning Frank's money in full. Tony also meets Frank's wife. That is the beautiful Elvira. Then Frank takes Tony and Manny to a nightclub. Frank offers Tony to work directly on him from now on. Frank allows Tony to dance with his wife. During the dance, Tony, who likes Elvira, tries to seduce Elvira. But Tony is ignored and belittled by Elvira, which makes Tony even more obsessed with Elvira. After three months, 
Tony rose rapidly through the ranks of Frank's cartel, from being just a courier and drug carrier. Became one of Frank's trusted generals. Tony is also increasingly obsessed with Elvira. Then Tony tries to make amends by meeting his family he has left behind for a long time. Told that Tony's father is a former United States Navy. Left the family when Tony was a kid. Since then his mother and 19-year-old sister, Gina, have lived in Miami. Tony shows up at his mother's and Gina's house. One night in fashionable clothes, Tony tries to offer $1,000 in cash to help his mother and Gina. But Tony's mother turned it down because they thought the money was from criminal proceeds. And didn't want anything to do with Tony. Gina, who still loves her sister, follows her outside. Tony ends up sneaking the money secretly with Gina. Tony is very affectionate and very protective of Gina. After that, Manny who was waiting outside said that Gina was very beautiful. And he likes Gina. But Tony angrily warns Manny to stay away from Gina, because she doesn't want Gina to date a criminal like her. Months later, because Frank got into trouble with the law that barred him from leaving America. So Tony is sent to Bolivia to help Omar strike a business deal with Bolivia's big drug lord Alejandro Sosa. For the purchase of 200 kilograms of cocaine. Even though Tony should have let Omar do the talking, Tony sees Omar as a bad negotiator. This prompts Tony to step in and make a re-deal, Tony negotiates what looks like a win-win for both parties, the deal is, Sosa will take care of the goods all the way to Panama. And Tony's side took care of the rest all the way to America. With the deal, cocaine was priced at $10,500 per kilo. When Sosa asks permission to take a call, Tony gets into a fight with Omar. On his return, Sosa advises Omar to return to Miami. While Tony was asked to remain in Bolivia so that he could continue to talk further business. A few minutes later, Sosa handed the binoculars to Tony. And Tony saw two of Sosa's aides executing Omar by hanging his neck from the helicopter. Sosa revealed that he received information, namely that Omar had been a police informant several years ago which caused Sosa's colleagues to be arrested. After Omar's death, Tony insists that he never thought of betraying and that he had never trusted Omar either. Believing that Tony was honest and brave had a hard time agreeing to get Tony to join him as his drug dealer partner in America. Sosa sternly warns Tony to never betray him in any way. Upon returning to Frank's office, Tony is scolded by Frank. For overstepping his authority. Also, Frank had heard about the news of Omar's death. Frank angrily tells Tony, that Tony is not negotiating well. And Sosa is trying to get rid of his excess cocaine stock. The point here is, Frank Lopez and his cartel don't have the ability to sell 2,000 kilograms of cocaine in just a few months. Because with him possessing that much cocaine, he has to go to war with the other cartels. Which Frank didn't want. Because war costs a lot of money and resources. Then Tony arrogantly replied that it was time for them to think big. And expanding the cocaine distribution cartel nationwide. They will make a lot of money and become the biggest cartel. Frank warns Tony that Sosa is a snake, and sooner or later. He would finish them off if there was the slightest deviation from his business. Frank then immediately tells Tony, that if a drug dealer is too ambitious he will not be able to stay in the drug business long. Tony arrogantly goes and takes Frank's advice. Then Tony met Elvira. He bluntly asked Elvira to leave Frank. Then he married her. Elvira was surprised but agreed to give it some thought. At night at a nightclub, Tony is approached by a police detective named Mel. Mel knows now that Tony is a major player in the drug trafficking business. Attempts to blackmail Tony out of the blue by luring him in exchange for protection and information over his business rivals. Tony ignores Mel, because he sees Gina dancing drunkenly with an asshole. Tony then follows Gina to the bathroom where she scolds Gina for wanting to have sex in the bathroom. Tony asks Manny to take Gina home. On his way, he confesses that he actually likes Manny. Manny ignores Gina considering Tony is very protective of Gina. 
and forbade Manny to approach him. Back at the nightclub, Tony is attacked by two gunmen. But managed to escape. Tony who was injured by a gunshot to his left shoulder. Finally managed to kill the two attackers. Tony suspects that it was Frank who sent Mel to blackmail him. And hired two assassins. Tony asked one of his bodyguards to call Frank. After that Tony and Manny went to Frank in his office. Frank was with Mel and Arnie, Frank's bodyguard. At exactly 3 p.m., Frank gets a call from Nick pretending to be a hitman hired by Frank. Frank then pretended that it was a call from Elvira. With this, Tony is increasingly convinced that Frank was the one who sent the assassin. Tony immediately pointed a gun at Frank. A cornered Frank begs Tony's forgiveness. Said that he could have Elvira and would give Tony ten million dollars. When Tony wants to let it go. Tony ignored him. Then Manny coldly executes Frank. A frightened detective Mel insists that he was not involved in this. But Tony who knows Mel's bad intentions doesn't believe it and Tony shoots Mel dead. Tony Manny and Cece then saw Frank's personal bodyguard, Arnie, who was terrified. Then asked if Ernie wanted to work for Tony, Ernie nodded and thanked Tony. After the incident, Tony was unstoppable. Everything seemed to be going well for Tony. Tony started a big business with Sosa for a year and a half. Tony married Elvira. Manny and Gina soon start a romantic relationship. But keeps it a secret from Tony who has emphatically stated to Gina that she doesn't want Gina to date anyone involved in the criminal business. One time, the manager of the bank where Tony kept his money, told Tony that the more money laundering was made from drugs, the more difficult it was to do. So he will charge a higher service fee of up to 10% of Tony's total treasure. Then Manny, offered a solution, there was a mobster named Settlebum. Willing to accommodate and launder Tony's money with a commission of only 4%. Tony agreed. Tony then began to forget himself and lost control. Elvira is very bored with Tony's monotonous life. Tony's only business. Elvira is not taken care of by Tony. As Tony counts the money, Settlebum reveals himself to be an undercover cop and arrests Tony with Cece. Tony underestimates the arrest that he has the best lawyer who can escape any sentence. Then Tony's lawyer told Tony that even though he could be acquitted of money laundering charges, Tony still had to serve at least three years in prison for tax evasion. Manny suggests that Tony go through with it, because the American prison system is not as harsh as it used to be in Cuba. Sheffield also said that the right legal loophole could reduce the sentence to six months. After hearing about Tony's arrest, Sosa doesn't want to lose his main distributor. Offers Tony a way out of prison. He calls Tony to Bolivia, he introduces Tony to his cocaine business cartel partners. A group that includes a Bolivian military chief landlord, Bolivia's interior minister, and a mysterious American named Charles Gutson. These people will help Tony to keep him in prison, but this help comes at a price. Sosa tells Tony that there is a Bolivian journalist called Sosa who is trying to uncover corruption involving Sosa's business partners. Sosa will send his executioner, Alberto, to New York to kill the journalist. However, he needs Tony and his crew to accompany him. Because Alberto didn't know the streets of America by heart. When he returned to America, Tony confided in many. Tony was obviously not happy with the assassination plan, because it was against his principle that he didn't want to kill innocent civilians. But with no other choice, Tony reluctantly agrees to help Sosa with the murder. Meanwhile, after a chat with Manny, Tony gets into a big fight with Elvira which causes Tony's marriage to Elvira to end. Elvira decides to leave Tony. He finally expressed his disgust for her. And the life he has lived. Tony is very drunk, tantrums and raves to other diners. Then, Tony and two of his men, Cece and Ernie, together with Alberto, will put a bomb under the journalist's car with the intention of detonating it outside the UN building. Before the man addressed the General Assembly and revealed the Sosa cartel. But Tony changed his mind when the journalist suddenly picked up his wife and children. 
Tony said that they should only kill journalists, not his wife and children. Tony surprisingly shoots Alberto to prevent the journalist's family from being killed. Tony then immediately shot Alberto in the head in the car. Then later, Sosa called Tony and angrily said, due to the murder of the journalist failed. The police have found a bomb planted under the journalist's car and the authorities know that Sosa is the prime suspect. Sosa angrily vows revenge with Tony. Tony, who is not happy with Sosa's behavior, arrogantly challenges Sosa to war. Later, Tony finds out that Gina and Manny have disappeared. Tony visits his mother. Again, Tony was scolded because Tony caused Gina to be damaged by Todd spoiling her with money. Her mother then told Tony Gina's address because she had secretly followed Gina. When he arrived at the house, Tony was surprised because it was Manny who opened the door. Tony then sees Gina wearing a nightgown. Tony suddenly becomes furious, crazily shoots Manny to death. Gina becomes hysterical. Gina reveals to Tony that she and Manny just got married. And was going to make a surprise plan for Tony. Tony overcome with guilt, takes Gina back to Tony's house. Tony pensively realized and regretted what he had done to his best friend Manny. While Tony is daydreaming, a large number of Sosa's mercenaries break into Tony's house. And quietly started killing all the guards around the courtyard. At the same time, a distraught Gina wearing only her nightgown unbuttoned and carrying a gun enters Tony's room. Gina starts shooting Tony. Gina has a mental breakdown due to Manny's death, a Sosa mercenary hiding on the balcony. Thought Gina was shooting at him. An enraged Tony throws the man off the balcony and kills him with a machine gun. The mercenaries, realizing that their actions had been discovered, began swarming the door to enter, attacking Tony's house from all directions. When all of his men are killed, Tony, still high on cocaine, leans on Gina's corpse, and apologizes for what he has done to Gina and Manny. At the same time, the mercenaries started to enter the house. Cece tried to restrain them. But unfortunately, when he banged on the locked door of Tony's room, Tony didn't seem to hear him. Finally, Cece was shot dead when the assassins prepared to storm into her room. Tony armed himself with a powder gun and grenade launcher, blew up the door while uttering his iconic words. A huge gunfight begins as Tony takes up position at the top of the grand staircase and shoots down dozens of Sosa's henchmen who try to storm the balcony. Tony was shot several times. Due to the effect of the drug, Tony seemed to be strong enough to receive a bullet. Tony continued to shoot. Tony who is in a drunken state with arrogance yells at them to shoot his bulletproof self. Tony didn't notice that Skull. Sosa's executioner was sneaking into the room behind him. Skull shoots Tony from behind with a shotgun. Tony fell off the balcony and plunged into the pool downstairs. In the last scene, when Skull and a few mercenaries who are still alive, see Tony Montana has died in a pool of blood which is located under a large brass that reads the world is yours and the movie ends.